Gig Gab, episode 397 for Tuesday, September 26th, 2023. <music> Greetings, folks. And welcome to Gig Gab, the show by, for, and about working musicians. Our sponsor this episode is factormeals.com slash giggab50, where you use code giggab50 to save 50%. We'll tell you more about that in a little bit. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. Here in Napomo, California, Paul Kent. How are you today, Mr. Kent? I am so good, Dave. That's excellent. I'm glad to hear that, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, life is good. Yeah. Do you have a bunch of gigs this weekend? I had uh, a couple of gigs last weekend. Okay. I had a really fun Monday night gig that oh. that regular winery I play. Yeah, now is doing music seven days a week. God bless them, and uh, it was mellow. But there were enough people there. Tips were good. They were like just amazing. That's that perfect vibe where there's enough people there where nobody feels like they're all by themselves. They're paying attention. They're tipping. They're a- asking questions and interacting. It was really a nice night. So that's awesome. It, a Monday gigs. Yeah. Yeah. I finished, we had tech week. So I played, uh, eight days in a row. We, we, we got the show up and running. Things went great. We, we opened the show soft opening on Thursday, then Friday, two shows Saturday. And then I had a bitter pill gig on Sunday, which was also my birthday, which worked out. It was actually really Happy nice. Birthday, Dave. Thanks man. Thanks man. Hey, so enough about us for now. <laughs> we are, uh, very happy to have a guest with us that, uh, is, Perhaps one of the listeners about whom we talk the most, Adam Moskowitz, Moskowitz, sorry, from Vam Band is here to join us. Adam, thank you so much for uh, for coming on the show with us. Always be performing. <laughs> <laughs> Way to kick it off. I love I, it. I said that too early. Sorry. Just wait for the outro, right? <laughs> no, it's totally fine, man. We say it whenever we have to say it. Thanks for coming on the show. Yeah. You, you added it's reverb and everything. I love it. Yeah, Dave and Paul, uh, I love your show, Gig Gab. Thank you so much for having me on and for, you know, talking about some of the topics I've reached out to you guys about. It's uh, it's pretty awesome. So yeah, thank well, you. We've, been, we've been doing this for eight, eight-ish years, right, Almost Dave? nine, yeah. Yeah, and um, certain musicians from around the country, around the world, have kind of had this ongoing dialogue with us. And you are, you know, one of the top ones that have just shared super interesting perspectives you know send us nice supporting emails over the years so it's actually very cool to finally get you on the show adam thanks so much and you know in preparation for this conversation i I sort of went back and looked at the emails i've sent you and Ah. i've been in original bands my whole life up until about four years ago when i started this cover band called van band i'm here in south florida by the way boca raton and um it's been really fun to look back and see where I was at each juncture when mm. I emailed you guys because right. things I'm, I'm all about evolution and pushing the band forward and keeping momentum going and growing the project. So it's been fun to revisit some of those old emails because now I do things in a very different way and I almost disagree with myself a few years ago. And I think that's well, actually kind of fun because it is I'm, good. Uh, I mean, we're all, we're all evolving in the ways that we learn about our band. I mean, that's really like most people know, this show started out as a, just a friendly conversation between two friends who played in bands. And we would just kind of share, you know, provide therapy to each other, provide helpful hints and that type of thing. And we were like, hey, this should be a show. There must be someone else out there who would want to be part of this conversation. And you just have been popping up for how, how long ago was the first email you sent us? Did you happen to see that? Uh, no, but I could pull it up right here while we're chatting. And, um, you know, when I was starting this cover band, I didn't really have any experience in the cover band world. Original bands are kind of a very different beast. You know, Dave, you know, you're, yeah. you're a fling project and a bitter pill as well. So I have a lot of experience in that. My prior band to Van Band was a reggae original band that I played bass in. And Van Band, I switched to guitar. So uh, in addition to being my first cover band, I also switched my main instrument sort of as a personal challenge to myself. I, I played bass almost by default when I first became a musician because my friends had a band uh, in high school called Squint and they just didn't have a bass player. Yep. And my buddy said, hey, I'll teach you, just buy a bass. So boom, I'm a bass player the next day. <laughs> uh, 15, Wait, were you playing later, guitar before that or, or you were playing no, nothing? 
I played nothing. I was just a music oh fan. I had some favorite stuff, but um, Paul, I, he's one I, of those I, prodigies. I, we got to get him out of here. No, <laughs> no, not actually, at all. Wait, hold, hold on a second, Adam. The, the funny sure. thing is, the first thing that came into my mind is when we had Brian Geller on, whose very first musical endeavor was copying David Lee Roth in a, in a Van Lee, in a Van Halen cover band. So you're basically David Lee Roth, Adam. Uh, I wouldn't <laughs> quite say that. So my first email was December 2018. To, to put some context. Right okay. That. All right. And in cool. that email, I was sharing with you guys how I'm trying to start up a band and some of the thought processes of how I was getting there. And, right. and sometimes the hardest thing about a band is that initial um, liftoff, that escape oh, yeah. velocity from going in the rehearsal room to on stage, you know, getting 30 ish songs ready for performance. That so I, yeah. Yeah, no. So I want to I want to kind of dig into this. Let's go back to December of 2018. Right. Because now if for those listeners who haven't put it all together yet, you're the one who runs the band that we've talked about where you've built it to be interchange, built it to work with interchangeable members. And one of the ways you've done it, and we've played some samples of this on the show, is that you have not just click tracks for every song, but guide tracks for every song that that are synced, I believe, and, and you're going to, we're going to talk more about this, but they, they sort of cue, here's, you know, the intro, here's the verse, here's the chorus, here's the outro, and then you've got lyric sheets and chord sheets that sort of match all of this stuff so that anyone, and I don't mean just anyone, but a, a you know, a well-prepared musician can show up and play your songs your way at your mm -hmm. tempos and put on the show. So that's where you are today. And I want to talk more about like exactly where you are today in a little bit, but you know, what, was that your vision in December of 2018 or, or was this all stuff that sort of came to you as by necessity as, as, as things evolved? Yeah, definitely by necessity as I've tried to grow the band and was initially looking for the players that fit my vision of what I wanted to hear. Because like I said, I've, I played original music, I, I wrote songs, I wrote bass lines. And going into this project, I was really 100% sure that I didn't want it to be like on the fence of original, you know, a cover band that plays originals. I wanted to do a, a legit cover band, sure. a dance band. I wanted to play weddings. I wanted to get to that uh, professional level of tightness. And uh, I, had, I put together an initial lineup. We played some shows before the COVID break. And, you know, we were gaining some momentum. We were, we were, you know, starting to build a reputation, but it was really that forced break over COVID where I listened to your guys' podcast a lot, uh, in addition to some other cover band podcasts that I love. And I really just reimagined what the band could be. And that's when I decided we're going to do click, you know, cause I, I worked with a drummer prior to that. Yep. That would speed up the tempo, you know, sometimes 10 BPM faster than I was hoping the ideal would be. And sure. no matter what I did, I couldn't control the guy's yeah. uh, adrenaline rushing. So I knew that I needed to um, just create a framework and potentially get a new drummer and, you know, have this, um, um, just the system for my band. Yeah. And that's what I've worked on over the past three, four years. I've created a system and, you mentioned interchangeable. You know, I, I like to use the word modular because yeah. I think of it like the ship of Theseus. You know that parable where you you take a, a boat and if you remove every part of it and you replace that part, is it still the same ship that started? And I sort of think of the van band that way, but I'm the only piece that remains. You know, I've <laughs> been at every van band show, but the entire lineup has rotated around me. Yep. And I found that having about four people for each role you know, four drummers, four bass players is kind of the sweet spot where I can book a gig on any date. And I know that at least one of those four, they all know my repertoire. Sure. I send out a set list like two weeks ahead of every show with the exact songs we're going to play. I send them the Google Drive link to all the tracks. And we also perform with a lyric teleprompter, which I think we should get into in a little bit. <laughs> okay. But all right. Yep. It's, it's huge. Between the click, the cues, and the lyric teleprompter, those three things are the magic trifecta 
that have allowed me to create this super tight band that I've dreamed uh, of. So you're and like you're like the honestly, Steely Dan of cover bands. Like you 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 have all these it, when, when not not today when Steely Dan has the same lineup that you know for every show, but when they were you know in the studio, they'd have like three drummers play the song and three bass players, and then you wouldn't even know if you, who you were going to be playing with if you were the one that would make the track. So this is kind of <laughs> how your band is. I, I got yeah. I have so many questions for you, Adam. Here's the first Jump one. In. Are you an engineer? You mean like sound engineer? Any kind of engineer. Oh, um, you know, I originally went to school to become an engineer and I failed out. And then I switched my major to accounting, which is what I do for my day job. I'm a financial analyst. Okay. Got it. So, but I am an engineer as far as sound engineer. I love recording. I love studio work. All the tracks I've um, greatly manipulated to fit my project. I, I adjust arrangements. I create mashups. I always typically adjust the BPM from the recorded version. I'll boost it up, you know, two to three, two to five BPM. So it, it's yeah. in that sweet spot of live where, you know, it's, it's pushing a little bit and, and the dance floor is feeling it, you know? Yeah. 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 So, no, no. My so question yeah, about an being an engineer was a lot more about, and again, this, I think of every email you've ever sent us, it's mm -hmm. just how methodical you are in your approach to these things and how well thought through all aspects of this stuff is again, it's, I find it to be very unique. I, we, I haven't, I don't think Dave, I don't think anybody else has, you know, represented some of the stuff that you've done. So it's just absolutely, mm. it's been fascinating since you first bubbled up for us. Next question is, so you're, you're an original band guy. Mm -hmm. How did you get all these heavy cats to play with you in a, in a brand new cover project? Right. So, so were yeah, you, were you well time. known around your scene? Like, did you already have a lot of context? I was, seen but videos. in, yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. My my prior band was an original reggae band, and my current band is the funk dance top forty cover band. Yeah, very different worlds. Even though both have great musicians, there was almost no crossover. I when I first started putting together the band, I did try to bring some of the reggae, you know, great players I knew over to the top forty world. It mm -hmm. just didn't work. I tried. So then, you know, I started on Craigslist. I, I put together a lineup that I could put on stage, always with the intention that um, I wasn't locked into these people. They, I'm the band leader. I, you know, they serve a purpose for a specific gig, but I knew that my vision was always bigger. And I knew that if I continue to follow that, and I'm not just willy-nilly firing people. It's more about I'm chasing a sound, you know, and that's, that drives everything. That drives all my decision making. I'm chasing a sound, and um, I'm happy to share that. Like now, currently, um, mm. I love this band. I'm, we're playing better than ever. I've really, you know, I have like a order of preference in my lineup. Of course. So, well, that's what I'm going to ask when you say I love this band. If you're four deep at every, which band do you love? All, all of it. All of it. Mm. All, 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 wow. all 25 of them. Or if I have four for you know six positions. Do the math. I'm not going to do it on the spot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Doing live math. It's 24 is the answer. But there it uh, is. I was going to guess it, but, but I didn't want. But I've learned on my on my Mac Geek Gab show to never do do live math. Yeah. It's always wrong. That's right. So yeah, I actually have eight uh, vocalists. So four male, four female, and oh. so that brings it up to about 30. So I'll say yeah. that I call it the Van Band family. But before every show, Paul, I've heard you talk about you know, does your band do like a huddle? Actually, I wrote in once about my set list and you saw on the bottom, I, I always write play with love. And uh, that's just, you know, a little note for the band members. Just, just a reminder when they look down, what's the next song? Oh, yeah. Like we're, we're playing music. It's not just like a rote thing that you just play the notes. That doesn't matter. It's all about conveying the feeling of the song. And um, I... <laughs> I really love the the connection that uh, can be established with with the crowd. It's like music is my passion. It's not my main source of income, but I love it. I think deeply about it way more than I think about my you know financial analyst work, which I also think about. <laughs> sure, boss is listening. <laughs> how how long did it take you? And and I'm I, I mean you said that the COVID break, uh, you know, gave you some time, like. Mm. How long did it take you to start building the tracks and, and come up with this system that, that, you know, gave you at, at least a, a foundation of these, these tracks with the, the guide, you know, guide mm. posts through them and the lyrics and all that stuff. How long did that take you to build up the first 
bit of it. And then now that you've got the system together, how long does it take if you're going to add a new song? How much work is that for you? So we, you start with one song, you know, that's, that's all you can ever sure. do. So we, I knew that we had a gig coming up that uh, I had some time where I could try to prepare the 34 songs or whatever we needed for that gig. And I started there and actually I've learned so much along the way about what's a good uh, click sound. You know, yeah. some, some click sounds will get lost in the mix really easily in a live mix uh, yes so we use I, a cowbell. I can attest to this yes <laughs> yeah so i use a cowbell and it has an accent on the first beat and it's consistent for every single track some songs you know we do uh, all night long by lionel richie and there's like there's some bars of two in a, in a four four song yeah so you know I, I make sure that the accent like resets on the bar too you know the little sure. things like that so that we all stay on the same page and it's i think of it like the invisible conductor so I started with one song. I think the very first one I did was the song Brick House by the Commodores. Yep. And from there, I've just iterated. I've kept uh, doing songs. We have about a repertoire of over 140 songs currently. And you asked how often do we add a new song and what's that process? So I love playing new music. Uh, and, and we're a band that doesn't rehearse. So I, I've written in about that as well. So. Yeah. We play new songs live for the first time on stage at every single show. There's very rarely a show that we don't play a new song, at least Whoa. one. And I love that. One new song can inject magic into an entire show. Totally. And totally. nobody in my band is ever bored. Like a I, these 30 musicians I play with, they give me a lot of feedback. And I also solicit it. I'm really big about communication. I love having phone calls with them. You know, because we don't rehearse and I don't do auditions, Everything is like video. They'll, you know, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll look them up or look share video, and then I have a phone call and I express to them how I run the band, kind of what I expect from their role, and you know, let's do a few gigs. We'll have another call, and I do that because when you're at the gig, there's a lot of pressure. Everybody's stressed about setup and yeah, yeah, yeah. Get home. So I just say, let's have a call in a few days. Let's talk about how the, how a few gigs have gone. We can make any like minor corrections if they're needed. And that's kind of how I run it. And when I bring in a new song, the, the process, I use karaoke version as, you know, the backing track source. Okay. And from there, I'll, I'll adjust arrangement. I'll maybe create a mashup, change the BPM. And then I create the practice tracks. And I do that by using snapshots in my DAW. So I can have a version minus drums, oh. a version minus bass, minus keys, et cetera. So and then smart. I just, uh, I'll cue all that rendering of, you know, it's about 10 tracks. If I do one minus each instrument and then one plus each instrument, instrument as uh, a learn track. So they can listen to it with their instrument louder and hear what's really going on. So that process. And then from there, I create the lyric video, which is like a bonus step. But I can do all of so that much in time. a day or two. So much time that you're putting in for preparation. I mean, this is not this is not the beginner's table here. This is like some seriously well thought out stuff. Yeah, but it, it's stuff that has like it, you. But I mean, it's not the beginner's table, but it's not like you've been doing this for 30 years either. Like you've really come together with this. This is fascinating. I, like and part of it, it's good that you haven't been doing this for 30 years because you couldn't have done this mm -hmm. 30 years ago. Right. So. Your band, Very true. your you know your your band would not uh, be able to to be like this were it not for um, you know were it not for the the availability of of all the technology. Great tech, you, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, you and the in ear together. technology that you know makes it possible for us to hear the cues and the click. I, I'm completely, you know, I'm looking, um, I'm looking to like the biggest pop acts, the biggest uh, bands that are touring, and I'm saying. What are I can't afford to go to many of the shows, but I look at them and I'm saying, what are they doing? What are what technologies are they embracing? And what can I do at the local regional level to make that happen? All right, look, with the busy fall season now in swing, you might be looking for wholesome, convenient meals for jam-packed days. And I mean that in both ways. Like your days might be packed full. But your days also might be packed full of jamming, right? And then you're going to want to have to eat, you know, and, and, and you don't want to spend your time 
cooking when you want to spend your time jamming out, right? So Factor, our sponsor and America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit, can help you fuel up fast with chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, you'll eat well, and you'll stay on track with your healthy lifestyle. Lisa and I have been enjoying Factor quite a bit these last couple of weeks. Our kitchen's being redone, which means we cannot cook. We have nothing to cook with. No stove, no nothing, but we got our microwave. And Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. So all we have to do is heat and enjoy And then we can, you know, go do whatever we want. And you can even level up with Gourmet Plus options prepared to perfection by chefs and ready to eat in record time. Treat yourself to upscale meals with premium ingredients like broccolini, leeks, truffle butter, and asparagus. And if you're running like crazy and you're too busy to think about lunch, keep your energy up with Lunch to Go. Effortless, wholesome meals like grain bowls and salad toppers that are ready to eat when you're on the go. No microwave required. This fall, get Factor and enjoy eating well without the hassle. Simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh, flavor-packed meals delivered to your door, ready in just two minutes, no prep, no mess. Head to factormeals.com slash giggab50 and use code giggab50 to get 50% off. That's code GIGGAB50 at Factormeals.com slash GIGGAB50 to get 50% off. And our thanks to Factor for sponsoring this episode. All right. So you mentioned your in-ears before. You mentioned your lyric teleprompter. So it, it like it's time to do some gear gab here together. Uh, let, let's start with the lyric teleprompter because it seems like that, that, that's a, a crucial piece of the equation here for you. What, what are you using? How do you trigger it? Like, talk, talk us through some of that. Okay. So, um, basically, when I first started the band, all of my singers were using iPads for lyrics. Sure. And uh, they were constantly swiping around. They're constantly trying to find the next song. I hated the look of it, but at the time, I just didn't have a better solution. Sure. And, you know, if we think about where that came from, you know, it, it used to be music stands with actual physical papers on them. And uh, it, in that situation, your biggest enemy is the wind. I was just going to so. say the wind and paper clips. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yep. it's a mess. But, you know, I've done it in the past. And as I saw all my singers messing with iPad, it's on, the, it's on their mic stand. It's in the way. I just said there's got to be a better solution. I started researching lyric teleprompters and what went into building one. There's some solutions that are um, a little bit more elegant than an iPad, but they still required um, what I'll call manual manual scrolling. Okay. So either the singer has to have some sort of foot pedal. You know, there's one called Air Turn that's a Bluetooth yep. foot pedal, and you yep. could page up or down. Uh, but you still have to find the next song unless you order the set in order and and we never play the same set twice every show is unique uh both in the lineup and in set list so (laughs) that wouldn't work for me uh i'm not a kind of guy that wants to play the same set and just rinse and repeat uh it it works for some bands sure um but it doesn't work for mine and actually before i continue on i just want to caveat all of this that there are so many different types of bands that you know a band is a business I run mine this specific way and I'm happy to share all my uh, secrets and, and, te- and techniques, but maybe it doesn't work for your band, you know, but maybe there's, maybe there's some little thing that you can take from what I'm sharing and incorporate it to make your band's production better or your uh, stage experience um, cleaner. So I use an app called Stage Tracks 3. And the reason I went with that one, as opposed to some others that do a similar lyric uh, display. There's like Band Helper, On Song, a few of them. Yep. Uh, stage Tracks allows you to specifically time code each line of lyrics. Oh, wow. So because I use Click and Tracks, I know exactly the timing of every song. My whole entire set, all 140 songs, I know exactly when every verse, chorus, bridge is happening and yep. the end of the song. Sure. So along with the, the verbal cues that are in the in ears, I also display on the lyric tel- teleprompter. Not only the lyrics, karaoke style, they highlight the exact line that we're playing at that moment. And uh, it also has arrangement cues. So, oh, wow. you know, there'll be things on there like break coming up or uh, just uh, verse, just bass and drums. Like all sure. those kind of little cues are on the lyric teleprompter as well. So 
I use it as a tool. And, and for me, it's really elegant because mine is 100% fully automated. It's view only. So some people, like I said, have to scroll it or a lot of touring acts that don't play with click and tracks. Uh, they ha actually have a extra human, somebody on their yeah. crew that's off stage, side stage, Sc scrolling manually for scrolling. Them. Yeah. And actually there's a really funny video. If you want to look this up, Dave Matthews band started using teleprompter some years ago Yep. and they were doing a cover of Led Zeppelin's uh, fool in the rain. I believe it is. Okay. And they, you could see Dave is like, he's making the motion to scroll what up. Like scroll. Off stage. He's like, <laughs> scroll up. And he's like vamping the intro to like wait for the lyrics to pop up. <laughs> and the the scrolling isn't happening. And yeah. Dave is getting more and more uh, angry and pissed. And <laughs> they finally drop into the song. And he just kind of like does this like crazy angry scroll. Like yeah. y y that guy that. had to explain something if he wanted to keep his job. I'm yeah. Assuming. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So <laughs> all that to say, a lot of the bands need an extra person to actually manually run right. it. I didn't want to have to do that. I wanted to not have to touch it. I just wanted it to magically work. And it took some iterations of my system to figure that out. And the way that I do it is I use stage tracks. I time code all the lyrics for every song. I just have to listen to it once and hit this time code button when it, it like automatically jumps to each next line. So it makes it easy code. for you to, to, to do this as you're listening. So it can be done Correct. in real time. Ah. And actually what I'll do, I'll, I'll, um, after this recording, I'll share on the gig Gab Facebook page, I'll share an example of what that looks like. Okay, cool. And I also have been doing some research about like all of the major acts that use a lyric teleprompter. And I'll, I'll share some information that goes a little deeper on that topic all right, cool. on your gig Gab Facebook page. Cool. Um, but that process, I only have to listen to the song once. I time code it. And then what I do is I create from my iPhone app, I create that into a video file, an MP4. And that gets oh. loaded into my DAW and it's perfectly aligned with, with the tracks. So are you triggering, like you have these videos and you have your, your DAW running on stage. Is that right? So you're triggering... Like, like the, all of this from like a MacBook Pro or, or, or MacBook Air, yeah. or like whatever. The same exact one I'm using to chat with you guys right okay. now. And <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, my mic is plugged into my Helix guitar pedal board, which I use as the hub of my entire show. Got it. It has all kinds of in outs on, on it. And I yeah. use it as an interface, which yeah. I'm doing right now. That's amazing. So, and it's MIDI. It takes MIDI going in and out. So I don't have to touch my laptop during the show. I literally hit a plate. I, I set it up so... On my Helix guitar pedal, I hit one of the buttons and it plays in my DAW. It starts the track. Plays the Probably. next song or whatever. And at yeah. the end of every song, it jumps to the neck to the beginning of the next song. Yep. What happens so if even there's an audible? I can jump or I can just walk to my laptop and jump to any song. I have the entire uh, set list open plus a couple bonus songs. Mm -hmm. I remember when I shared my set list to you guys, I have that little like bullpen is what I call it. Yeah. So we have our set list and then there's like maybe four or five extra songs that are not 100% going to be called, but they may be called. They may sure. be an audible that I go to. Amazing. And um, I can jump around to any of those very quickly. It would only take me two seconds to tap the keyboard. Uh, and, and that's how I run the live show. I try not to touch the laptop at sure. all because I just don't like the look. It looks like I'm checking my email or something. Yeah, yeah. And I want <laughs> to avoid that. We had, we had a, uh, a bass player in, in a band that instead of using an iPad, he didn't want to buy a tablet. So he would use his laptop and our guitar player would always make jokes about, Oh, he's just over there booking his flights for tomorrow. He's going to be, he'll be ready to play in a second. You know? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, it's ordering it, dinner for after the show. Oh, yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> Checking your stocks. Yeah. yeah. So, all right. So, okay. So stage tracks three, I've got a link for that in the show notes for folks. Yeah. If they want to check it out, you mentioned your IEMs. So let, let's, let's talk about what you're using for that because you know, that's a topic we near and dear to our hearts here. What what are what are you using for your actual ears? And then like I assume you're wireless with a, a belt pack of some sort. Like how are how do you do that? And and what do you require from your band members too? But we'll get to that part. Yeah. Yeah. So the band members, all they need to bring is their in ear headphones. And these days you can get a pair that's you know decent for stage as cheap as twenty twenty five dollars. There's sure. really no barrier to entry. Yep. And the only other piece that's needed is the uh, little belt pack. Which um, you know, I, I always carry about six of these. Okay. It takes the XLR feed from my mixer, and they plug their headphones in. So I always have about six or seven of those. Some of the people in my band have their own wireless setup. I have a stereo wireless setup that I prefer. Oh yeah, stereo's possible. best, man. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
And and we use a Soundcraft UI twenty four R mixer. I'm currently like maxing that out when my because the other thing with my band besides being modular is that I can expand and contract it based on the type of gig. We can go down to a duo or a four right. piece, or we can grow up to a ten piece if I bring in a live horn section. If I bring a percussion player, uh, more extra vocalists. So when we grow to be a bigger band, I run out of inputs on. So I, I, oh, I'm yeah. soon going to upgrade to like a you know a 32 input. Sure. But yeah, yeah. For now, that works, and it has eight um, you know aux, auxiliary outputs for monitoring. So that covers all our bases, and everybody has their own inner mix that they can. Um, you know, mix themselves on their phone. There's no sure. app needed for the Soundcraft. That, right, right. Very cool. Yep. So, um, but but I, I do want to get a little bit nerdier here. I want to know yeah, which which, which wireless belt pack you use and which which in ears you you're using these days. Yeah. So there's the Behringer P2, which is a really good one, but that runs on uh, AAA batteries. So they also have one by a company named Donner, and yep. that one's rechargeable. So I just, uh, it's great because I don't have to worry about replacing the batteries. You know, they last for like 30 gigs, but how do you know when to replace them? So I, the Donner ones, I have been buying more recently and I, I just recharge it before every gig, never have to worry about it. Really, I can send you the link for that if you'd like. Is and that the Donner EM1? Is that what it is? I believe so. All right, yeah. cool. I've got that. And then what are, you, what are you putting in your ears these days? So right now I just have the, this uh, cheap shore uh these aren't anything great. Yeah. Um, they're the the final piece that I need to upgrade. But okay. as a band leader, I've like always found other things that I want to invest in. And I worry, you know, these do the job. At some point, I will invest in a, you know, custom set. So I'll get hang, hang tight a little bit on that because oh, I, well. I think I have found a company that makes good quality, affordable, custom IEMs. I was out to lunch with our friend Mike Dias, who's been on the show. He is like, he he is the, the guy who knows everybody in the in ear world. And I said, look, man, I I need to know of a company. If you, if I said to you, I want to buy inexpensive but quality in ears, and he just without even taking a breath, he spat out a company name. So I don't want to recommend it without trying it first. So that's why I'm being coy about this. Cool. But I'll, it's I'll throw a little something out there. Coming too, soon. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I'm interested in that. I know my drummer uh, works for an in-ear company called Clear Tune Monitors. So okay. at some point, I'll probably go through him and he'll yeah. give me uh, the drummer hookup because I've been paying him well for many years. Yeah, now. there you go. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, what's I'll the, what's the name there. of those? Clear Tune. Clear Tune Monitors. Tune. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm always happy to hear about it. You know, the, the off-brand ones because that's what generally that's what's going to be affordable for people. And if somebody's doing it right, but they aren't spending, you know, a fortune on marketing, well then maybe that savings can be passed along. So, well, yeah, we've been talking about this a while, how yeah. these things get commoditized. Yeah. And the, the name brands hold on to a high price point as long as they possibly can. But in the meantime, like if you go on Amazon, you are seeing like, people raving about some of these in ears that are like you said 20 40 50 80 dollars yeah, and kz is the brand K yeah, yeah kz for the for universal fits yeah kz is a great place that's to what start. nick uses yeah 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 mm -hmm. yeah yeah, yeah. It, they yep. do the job and i tell my people in my band no iphone headphones we're not doing that yeah no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's in ears only any and like i said very cheap uh barrier to entry yep yep All right, adam i've got two super me, questions for you yep yep so uh six to eight people at each at each position you're very deep you're a band leader do you ever get people saying why didn't i get that gig what you know wh wh what's going on here you know i thought i was your guy or something like that so how do you how do you it's socially difficult to manage the same people every day how do you manage a deep bench sure so many of the people i play with perform in several other bands so, and not all of them, but part of me is, like I said, always chasing a sound. So when I'm considering who to hire for a gig, it's, you know, I have my preference as far as my rhythm section, but vocalists, I actually enjoy, I, like I said, I have eight vocalists, four, four male, four female. I actually enjoy mixing and matching them in different uh -huh. um, you, you know, really are like steely combinations. Dan. Yeah. 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 I, I, it's fun. I mean, I do this for fun and joy and it's, it's uh, every show is then got this like special energy. Cause 
we're we're laying it all out on stage sometimes in front of really big crowds for you know we're performing this stuff for the first time but everybody is professional highly professional and everybody's coming prepared ready to go and i give them all the tools to show up to to knock it out of the park i mean you know with the click and the tracks and the lyric teleprompter i think of it like bowling with bumpers so it's much easier to get a strike and it's like almost impossible to get a gutter. Yeah. So what I think your answer is, is that you are purposely picking people who are by design, not available all the time. You know, that, that Partially. It, it goes both ways. So it goes so both you know ways. They and, you- and some people, some people will express to me, you know, um, I'd love to play with you as often as possible. Um, I think everybody in the network and the family, they know that, um, I'm aiming towards something and that even if they weren't invited on a specific gig, they're always happy when they get a call. You know what I mean? Super interesting answer. I'm just like, my mind is just spinning like crazy at the concept of that. Cause like I said, managing the same people and creating a gel is a thing. I mean, like every band member you ever talk to you, like trying to get, you know, a, a vibe amongst mm. the consistent people. Yeah. Is, and is, in a way, in a way, doing the way I'm doing, it allows that uh, it's kind of drama free because if somebody brings drama to the stage or to, to my experience, I'm hiring yeah, somebody chart, else. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah, instantly just... lowering them on my call That's list. Right. And it's, you're it's, you're it's, basically by design telling them I've got options all the time. Everybody knows I have options. So they Amazing. know when I give them a call that I'm, I'm and they don't know necessarily if I ask if yeah. I've asked four people before them, does that matter? I don't think it does. It's just no. that on any given date, the Van Band has to be great. And I have found over time, and, and a lot of the current people that play in my band are recommendations from great musicians. Yeah. So I want to put that out there that um, at first I was Craigslist and I, I, I found some decent musicians, but not the greatest in the world. And not the greatest for my vision. And over yeah. time, I found when I find a great musician, I say, "Who else do you know? Who else would be a good fit?" Yeah. yeah. So if smart. you recommend somebody, you're to constantly me, I recruiting. And I and I um, advocate for it because I say, if you recommend somebody to my band and I book them on a gig, I give you a finder's fee, twenty five uh, bucks or whatever it sure. is. What a good guy. Amazing. It's just it's just simple and good business. Uh, it incentivizes people to you know help me out, and I help them out. We all help each other. It's a beautiful thing. It is a beautiful. Right, you you my- said, I just want to kind of shine a light on something that you said, Adam. You said, everybody knows I have options. It's sort of as the answer to, to your question, Paul. And yeah. it reminds me of when I first got here to New Hampshire, I joined that cover band with, with it was a female fronted cover band. She ran the band and she told me right up front, she said, look, I have major commitment issues. So I will. Like, never tell you that you are the only drummer in my band. I will likely hire other people. Similarly, if you've got a gig, don't feel bad. I know other drummers. If if I But once we commit to a gig, she's like, I expect you to be there and you, you can expect that you're going to be the drummer, you know. But, but if, yeah. if I offer, like, if I offer you a gig and you say, no, I'm booked that night, don't sweat it. it you know, it, it cut both ways. But the fact that she articulated that out of the gate there was it, it like there were never any hard feelings like when i saw that she was playing with you know somebody else it was like okay fine whatever and and it was really never an issue and it sounds like you've kind of got the same thing you're just paving this path so mm-hmm. yeah. i actually take it even further uh-huh. and that if somebody has to cancel a gig that they agreed upon with me it's also all good uh-huh. i i've never been mad at somebody for you know, I, I, my main drummer plays in a bunch of other groups and he told me another band he plays in couldn't get a sub for one gig. He had told me yes first, but he really wanted to honor this gig with the other band, asked me if I could. He knows I have options. three, four, or five other <laughs> options that are, you know, also great and also bring a slightly different spice. They bring their own energy and yeah, you know, a lot of the, our set list uh, remains, even though it's rotating and we're adding sure. new songs. There's there's chunks that are you know at most shows, and each individual musician brings their own spice to that music, to that, that instrument, and I absolutely love that. It's like like I said earlier, I'm a chef, and it's like you know uh, 
if you throw all these ingredients in a pot and you got a unique stew each time yeah. and it's always high level, you know, Amazing. I've never, uh, we've never like had a complete failure on stage. And I, I was going to ask, have you has like, what's the closest, because you have a, a, a very like, well, a tight system, mm -hmm. except we all know that, you know, sometimes things don't work the way we expect them to work. What's the closest thing to a train wreck that you've had? And and I'll knock on wood for you before you, you answer this question, because I, I realize that I'm I'm setting you up for failure with, uh, <laughs> with, with Murphy's Law by doing this. Yeah. You know, things go wrong sometimes. Um, new technology hasn't worked out all the kinks yet. Sure. As I attempted on stage. And sometimes I need to like... Uh, we had a gig once. We, we mentioned wind earlier with the music stand. So yeah. I keep my laptop on a stand off to the side of the stage. We were playing an outdoor gig. And during set break, we were playing two sets. And during set break, our, a huge gust of wind came along and knocked my laptop over. And the reason I knew is because I also create playlists that go on during our set breaks. Yep. Because one thing I hate is when somebody else DJs and they're like DJing a song that is about to be in our set. Sure. In, in 20 oh, minutes. Right. I hate that. I, hate I want that. I hate that. I want oh, yeah. music to be fresh to people's ears. So yeah. I create all I have all these kinds of set break set lists, uh, DJ mixes, different kinds of things, pre-show, mid-break, after yep. the show, all kinds of different things. And so this this one gig, all of a sudden the music stopped and I looked over and my laptop had blown over and was on the floor. And I'm I don't have a new laptop. Uh, Dave, I know you also have another podcast, the the Mac uh, Geek Cab. Is that yeah, it? that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I've, I've listened to that as well, and I'm a fan, and I've been thinking about uh, writing in because you're giving away some sort of laptop on there, right? Oh, we're giving away a laptop on Business Brain. That's right. Business yeah. Brain. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. right into Business Brain. Yeah, yeah. Cause it, I need yeah. to do that because the laptop I use for everything I've mentioned to you guys and all the shows, I'm using it for Zoom right now. It's from 2012. It's a MacBook Pro, and it's barely hanging on. I do all my video editing on there. It's so this it, incredible, dude. technically adept dude is using yeah. 10 year old laptop technology. I need an upgrade, come on, and, you know, dude, I'm gonna put on, it man. out there. Um, when you if move anybody to, wants to donate, <laughs> when you move to Apple Silicon, because you're on Intel right now, and I know I'm getting like nerdy in another way, but when you mm -hmm. move from Intel to Apple Silicon for your video editing and all that, mm -hmm. it's gonna blow your mind. I know, and I can't wait. It's really slowing me down. Yeah, like, I could be doing all of this quicker, but I'm restrained by my yeah. my laptop. I, and so this even this amazes right me now. even more that you've like done everything that you do on. The, listen to this, folks. None of us have any excuses at this point. Nope. <laughs> Get to work. Get to work. Get to work. All right, my last question, Adam. So. Yeah. <laughs> I've really enjoyed this chat, man. This you are awesome. an instinctive entrepreneur. I mean, the way that you just have, I started asking for an engineer just because I have not met another band leader that is so methodical in thinking out a business plan. However, my brother, I will tell you this, you are the polar opposite of my band, right? So my band is this, I, my goal is to have it be the exact same people every day, year after year after year. And but it's not. Well, it, 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 unless it's an emergency, it is, right? And I've heard you the share reason stories for that is, of uh, you've had different drummers come in, you've had different bass players come in, you've had many guitars. I, I'll just, I don't want to cut you off, but if you, if you time lapse your band, if you kind of fast forward it, it's kind of the same as what I'm doing. Well, let me, let me, let me <laughs> explain why, why I've, yeah. I've never had a period where it's been like a revolving door. I've never, ever had that. And the, my, the point that I'm trying to make is, I've always felt important that if someone hires the house rockers, they know exactly they're going to get a 10 piece mm. band with a five piece horn section always. And I spend like, if you ever look at our Facebook page, I want to build an audience based upon people who know the personalities of my band. I, I post the guys, the band members, birthdays, you know, video, you know, whatever it might be. So my, my strategy. So, so I like, you know, I had a drummer get sick and I had to have a, a, a sub drummer for a while, but it has never been ever, ever part of my strategy to have a open chair and a revolving door. We might've been, you know, uh, like, like we had the same lineup for many, many years, again, an occasional sub for an emergency, but it's never been an open chair type of situation. So that's my point about how we are like very different. So my question to you is, do you, do you, 
Do you price your band based upon the number of people that you're putting on stage? Do you, um, how do you deal with when someone comes up to says, Oh, I love your band or where's so-and-so I love hearing her sing, or I love his soloing or something like that. So how do you kind of deal with that when, when the external forces of the world ask you questions about your model? Yeah. And, uh, it's a great question. What often happens is people come up to me, they know I'm the familiar face, uh, in the rotating cast of characters. And, I, I completely, like I said earlier, there's a million infinite ways actually to run a business and a band as a business. So I totally respect the idea of a, uh, a familiar lineup and people know, um, you know, whoever's on trumpet is going to be on trumpet every show. I, that That's great. I love a lot of bands where I, uh, I love the individual musicians. You know, if the Beatles had a rotating cast, they wouldn't be the Beatles. Wouldn't be the Beatles. I guess. But what I'm trying to deliver is a high quality product no matter what. And I don't want to say no to opportunities, uh, which I've had to do in the past when I didn't have the options. I've yep. been offered gigs yep. and I've no, had to absolutely. say, no, sorry, my drummer is uh, out of town. So I hated that. I want to play if I'm available and it fits into my life. And I've taken steps so that that's uh, feasible. Um, why, to, why? To, yeah. Go ahead, finish your thoughts. Sorry. Uh, just one more thing. When people come up and they're like, uh, oh, hey, where's this other singer? But whoever you had tonight, they were so great. It's it's <laughs> typically like every show is unique, like I shared, and the talent that I'm getting is only getting better. So nobody is coming up and saying, hey, where's the singer that you stopped That's working cool. with? There's a reason I stopped working with them because they weren't following my vision. Yeah, right? yeah no, amazing. So the last question, really quick. <laughs> I, and I can, we could do this for several more hours. Yeah. Uh, is Did it ever cross your mind, if that is your model, why isn't it Adam Moskowitz in the Van Band? You know, it's it's not so much about me, and I'm not the lead singer. Maybe if I was a lead singer, I'd want, I'd put my face more on it. But I'm the guitar player, and I'm actually, you know, on stage, I'm a performer. I love, you know, I, I play wireless. I love moving around. I love sharing the energy with the crowd. But offstage, I'm um, an introvert. I'm a very shy guy. Like I shared, music is what has helped me get out of my uh, shell a little bit throughout my life. And when I'm behind a guitar or a bass or whatever instrument I'm playing, uh, I come alive in a different way. And that's sort of like like being on stage and performing with my band feels like home. Mm. Almost, you know, almost more than any other place beyond my physical home. You know, like playing on stage and being in the flow of music, there's nothing better to me. It's uh-huh. like, it, it makes me feel so alive. Uh, I love that I'm able to create and facilitate these experiences for not only myself, but uh, different musicians that I play with and different crowds. We play all over South Florida from, you know, down in the Keys all the way up to West Palm Beach. And we've even done some gigs in the Bahamas. They flew us over wow. and did a gig uh, a couple of years ago. So I just absolutely love playing music. It's uh, it's the greatest pleasure, um, you know, beyond my family, and uh, I just want to continue doing it as long as I'm alive. Yeah, man. You well, should. you know, it it's interesting. You mentioned that there's an invisible conductor on stage. In a sense, it's you, right? You're you're me, the invisible conductor. Like, <laughs> and I used to, you know, before I did all the cues and all that, I used to have my MD mic. And I have my mic splitter, which I've shared with you in the past. Sure. It's just a box I can step on that yep. pulls my mic out of the house and just into the in-ears. And I used to guide the band that way, and I would pass solos around that way. And now, because I've automated everything, I barely have to talk to the band unless there's an, an audible, unless there's some special situation where I need to tell them something. I still have it there, but I, I now use it less than ever because mm-hmm. I've automated it they have this the prompter if they want to glance at that as we're heading to the bridge they can see exactly what's going on that's great um no as you're i like i i i mentioned at the beginning of the show that i i did tech week for this theater show and the band's on stage for it and the band is spread out on stage so there is no like whispering that, that could happen and i've got one night that i'm subbing out and i spent so much time last week and and this week even creating notes for the sub it's gonna it's an impossible thing if i were him i would quit i would not want to sub this gig right like that this is not it's not easy and it, there's i can't imagine how it's gonna go well because he hasn't had the benefit of you know six rehearsals learning all these things 
But as you're talking about what you're doing here, it's like, oh man, if we could create a guide track for this show and just have it tell him, like the MD can talk in his ear a little bit, but there's mm -hmm. no way to tell him everything that he needs to know, especially when the MD is also on stage. Like you would just yeah. have to constantly narrate and that's going to be distracting, you know? So yeah. yeah. I want to share something with you, Dave. When yeah, I man. first started listening to Gig Gab, uh, I was like, do I want to hear about this guy's theater experience? Like, I didn't really understand how sure. that would apply to me and my band, you know, yeah. public performance thing. But as I've listened more and more, I've wondered, why don't these theater experiences use, use a, you know, a click and, and, and tracks? And Some do. I guess they don't have a guy like me that's, you know, willing to do the work to set all that up. But... And and maybe the money isn't there to yeah you know, for for regional that. theater the money's not there but but a lot of broad most of Broadway is run your way now I I think yeah. a, a friend of mine is the he is the number one guitar sub for Wicked right so which yeah. means the way things work on Broadway like somebody will get, will get the chair they keep the chair um, because they get their pension, but they sub it out as much as they can as they get later and later in their career. So my buddy Andy is, is like, he's basically guitar one for, for wicked. Um, and hopefully he'll take the chair when this other guy finally actually retires. But he was saying okay. wicked is one of the few shows that is not done to a click. Most of Broadway is all click now because it makes sense. The show needs to, to run the exact right timing. It needs to, it, you know, so. And what, an another aspect we haven't mentioned yeah. is when you, when you have that setup, you can automate the lighting and oh, yeah. any, it, any exactly. stage smoke or whatever, all of that can be perfectly timed and yep. not need a manual trigger, yep. which is, it's so magical. I'm in the process of uh, automating some of the lighting. I uh, haven't uh, debuted that with my band. I it's like a future, you know. Sure. I, like I tell yeah. you, the vision is always growing, and I am a person that loves to put my energy into enhancing and improving this project that brings me so much joy, and you know, a little bit of side cash. Sure, as well, of course. So yeah, I'm course. always trying to enhance it because we can charge more money when our production is better. Absolutely. And we, when we grow the lineup and we can offer a ten piece band like the House Rockers and a five piece horn section, that's been really inspiring. I love playing with a live horn section, and I totally get why you commit to that five piece horn section. It's really incredible, and I commend you for that. I would love to grow and be able to afford that at every show. We're not there yet, but. You, you know, you guys invite me back on in, in another year or two, and I'll share with you, you know, the growth that I've gone through because that is the vision. You know, I would yeah. love to have, you know, a percussion player, multiple vocalists, a choir. You know, if I, I can go really big with this vision, you know, yep. and maybe we'll do some gigs like that sometime in the future, a string section. You know, I'm a I'm a music lover, and I just. I would love for nothing to be on the tracks. Right now, those are just filling in because I can't afford to bring a string section, a sure. horn section, percussion player to every gig we do. But maybe one day that'll be the case and my tracks will just be uh, for guidance, just cues. You yeah. know, that, that, that's very cool with me too. I'm not committed to, um, you know, the backing track situation. But sure. playing to a click, even if you take away the track element, a click, playing to a click has improved my band a thousand percent uh, it, the tempos are always perfect. The dr a big thing I want to mention, and I know we're coming to a close pretty soon, right? So um, the drummer does not have to count his sticks four times to start every song. Right. When you're playing with the click and cues, everything is automated, and we just hit the downbeat on one, or the drum fill comes in, whatever it is, just happens. There's no, are yeah. you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? No. Song just starts. We're all song, you better be ready because the click's happening in your ears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. And yeah. every song, it starts with, you know, the name of the song, the key of the song. Because also, you know, Paul, you mentioned, why would you need the chords? You played these songs hundreds of times. We play certain songs because we work with different singers. Some songs we play in different keys, actually. Oh, from gig so one to singer, one night you might play it in one key and the next night you're correct. a whole step up because you're with exactly. a different singer. Oh, wow. Yeah, exactly. It's usually a step down, but yeah, well, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, whichever. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but because of that, you know, I have different versions of each track if they're wow. in the different key so that uh, what's being displayed and what's coming through the in-ears is for the appropriate key for that singer. So sure. that's just a little it, extra step. That super I got. amazing business model and, and creative model, actually. Uh, actually, business model is what you were able to go out with, but as you talk through it, it's really a creative model for you. And it just totally, this interview is as good or better than I could have hoped, you know, just 
You are super interesting, Adam, and congratulations on all that you've accomplished. And keep going and come back when you get that horn section. We'll compare notes on managing horn players because they're freaking mm. nuts, man. <laughs> but I love them. That that sound of live horns, they're, they're, you know, there's nothing. Yeah, that can there's nothing better. That you moving know, air through I a metal agree. thing. That's one instrument that I don't play that I um, would love. You know, if I could make that sound through a saxophone or a trumpet, it would be really awesome. So I really appreciate those players. And, uh, you know, your guys' podcast, like I said, it's it's been really inspirational as I've grown this band. And, I, you know, I've thrown some ideas at you guys and you guys kind of uh, throw them back on the show. So it's really cool to, like, see that progression and then come on the show and be interviewed by you guys. Thank you for having me. It's it's really oh, cool. Man, and great, it's an uh, awesome well, pleasure to chat with you. It's been a conversation among friends for eight plus years and now consider yourself a friend. Yeah. Thanks for all the emails over the years and thanks for just adding so much to all the listeners that are listening tonight. So thanks a lot, man. Where sure. te- Before we go, tell uh, tell everybody where they can find you and find, find Van Van. Yeah, so on Instagram, I'm at Adam Moskowitz Music and you'll see my name spelled in the episode title. Uh, I'll also share it on the Giga Facebook page because I'm going to share you uh, right. a little bit more detail on the lyric teleprompter just so you guys can have it all. And also a bunch of pictures of different artists using them. Um, my band is at vam.band on IG. And, you know, it's free to give us a like, a follow, and, you know, drop a comment. All of those things are free. If you guys enjoy bands, you enjoy their music and their shows, it's so easy to support bands. And I try to be... Um, not only the best band leader I can be, and I've learned from a lot of other band leaders, but I've always just tried to be the change I want to see because I've worked with other band leaders and I've been like, man, I wish they did this better. Man, I wish they were more organized. And now now you get to do those things. Yeah. Yeah. And in all my bands in the past, it wasn't just me as band leader. It was usually like, um, you know, shared with somebody else. It was um, a partnership in a way. This is my first band where it's like, I'm running the ship. I'm doing things the way I do it a hundred percent. And you're, you're, you're rocking it, man. This is great. Thank you so much. Th- I'm, thanks I'm for, thanks for coming on the show. This has been, uh, it's been a long time coming and I'm glad we finally made it happen. Yes. Amazing. Yeah. I got one last thing to say to you guys. Yeah. What's that? What's that? Always be performing. <laughs> That's good advice. <laughs> thanks again, man. <laughs>